the AKM, Tokyo Marui's third GBBR behind their iconic M4 series and Type 89. This rifle was released to the world about a year and a half ago. Previously I made a rough overview of it, and I wanted to return with a full review. Hey guys, Badabing here, thanks for joining me, and for celebrating the AKM's past year and some change on the airsoft market. This is going to be a good one. We have thrills. We have chills. And we have some delicious chocolate. Not like in my GHK AKM review, where I had some disgusting Russian chocolate. No, nothing but quality here. So, we have quite a show in store for you, and when I say we, I really mean just me. Yep, I alone put together these videos for your viewing pleasure. And if you enjoy stuff like this and would like to support this solo content creator trying to cut out a slice of YouTube for himself, smash that subscribe button. If you'd like to help me out beyond that, you can donate to the channel at buymeacoffee.com. I've had some absolute legends support me there, and they've played a big part in making some upcoming content a reality, something which I think you might like. Even the smallest donations goes a long way, links in the description. This is going to be a long video, and I've included a breakdown of time codes, so you can skip to whatever you care to see. Go straight to the shooting, cold weather, or for the spoilers at the end, the choice is yours. The Tokyo Marui AKM GBBR, let's do this. The AKM arrives in the usual fashion, within a cardboard box that features excellent box art, TM always showing off before you even get inside the thing. As previously mentioned in the overview, it comes with the typical user manual and accompanying accessories, including a very nice canvas cloth base which also serves as a gun wrap. I don't think anyone would use it for transporting or anything, but it's charming that TM included it nonetheless. Since its release, the AKM has taken some flack within the community for its less than impressive external construction, and they mainly took aim at its fake wooden furniture and cast receiver, which I can absolutely understand their frustration, although I believe they are overreacting. Even if it was full steel and wood, it'll always be a toy gun. If TM released these with genuine wood furniture, the retail price would be a hell of a lot more. The majority of people would have discarded that wood anyway for modern kit, so there we are. Despite their choice of materials, you cannot dispute the fact that each and every single component is finished to a high standard. The rifle is superbly made, there's no sharp edges, defects, nothing, it's all rounded off and smooth. This is another aspect where TM shines, Japanese products are elite. Expanding upon the attention to detail once more, they've accurately replicated a 1975 Ishmash AKM. Will Scary left this comment on my overview, and it made me really proud that TM took the time to embellish their new GBBR with these details. Check out his YouTube channel, his knowledge is extensive and videos are gold, you need to see his content, it's wonderful. The rifle in hand is rather hefty and most of that weight is shifted towards the front, not evenly distributed throughout the platform like it is on my GHK. With this, you get the feeling it's touting a heavy steel barrel, so it sells it really well. Not only is it a weighty beast, the entire frame is robust, it's not sloppy or rickety. Pressed against your shoulder, it lets you know it's a firm machine, ready to dispatch whatever's in front of you. The only negative from this feeling is the plastic stock which can have a little creak in it when you're running the gun. In the changes of temperature throughout the year, I've noticed it gets worse when it's warmer. The functionality is dynamite. Beginning with the magazine insertion, the process is slick, there's no second guessing or fiddly nature to it, rock in, pull back and click, it's seated. And once it's in there, it's not moving anywhere, it's locked in tight. Running the action is slick. A safety feature TM engineered was locking the bolt when the rifle is in safe, so when you flick off the safety and strip back the working parts, you hear the nozzle break a strong seal from the chamber, and it retracts back into the bolt carrier as you're working the action. It holds such a good seal that if you have a round in the chamber and pull back the working parts, it will eject the BB, 
There's no doubt about it, it is pure quality. The cycling of the Bolt is almost as silky smooth as their M4, only the M4 is doing a better job on the account of the roller bearings. Like the GHK AK series, this features a half-travel Bolt carrier, a feature many AK fans would despise, and I understand them. Doesn't really bother me though, it is what it is. Now the safety selector is where the functionality is a little bit of a letdown. It feels light and unrealistic, much like their M4. There's a certain cheapness to it that perhaps is a smidge underwhelming. I said in my overview that the trigger is clean and positive, and it absolutely is. It does feature a light pull, but it's not toyish like the M4 trigger. The action has a narrow window of operation, and you get only a few mils of take up until you reach a wall, and once you've pulled past, it breaks. The returning reset is sharp, definitive and crisp. A short window of operation like this will allow you to run the AK quickly on semi-auto if need be. The button from the recoil guide rod assembly can be pushed in, and this pops off the top cover from the receiver, and this has its own little track where it slots into. It's all very secure. Also to note, it's got a realistic two-piece guide rod. So cool. The bolt carrier lives within its own track, and locks and unlocks from its position with a good clunk as it interacts with the hammer. Its piston extension and main bulk of the carrier is a single block of metal with a separate portion which holds the nozzle. This part here can get a bit loose, especially if you're an awesome individual that keeps his or her AKM on a diet of propane. So remember to tighten up those bolts. There's one at the front and one on the back. Interestingly, the gas piston rides all the way forward to rest within the gas block. That's another element of realism TM replicated over its Taiwan cousin. The hop-up dial is tucked up out of the way to the left of the chamber, or it's on the right if you're looking through the magwell. It doesn't adjust in clicky increments, however it does cycle through with the perfect amount of resistance. In the year and a half I've been using this AK, it hasn't deviated from its adjustment at all, so it's alright. On the other side of the chamber they have the dry fire switch. This piece here is annoying to engage if you have chubby fingers. Essentially you're pulling it back and upwards to lock it in place. This holds the follower tab down and behaves as if it's holding BBs, allowing you to dry fire the AKM. It's simple yet effective. The bolt stop mechanism, as I said earlier, relies on the various tabs and levers on the magazine to allow the hammer to drop without punching the output valve. The whole process works like this. The BB follower flicks up on empty to trip the tab next to the feed lips, and this is connected to a plastic block that elevates the striker above the valve, so when you pull the trigger, the striker hits an empty void instead of the valve, thus we get the realistic hammer drop. The fire controls on the AK are not going to be steel from the factory, that's no surprise there. However, the great thing about it is that it features big chunky parts. Where the M4 has to squeeze all of its components within a small trigger pack, the long receiver of the AKM has a cavernous void to use to its advantage, and TM filled it with thick and seemingly rugged components which all sit within their own trigger box. I shan't be disassembling it for you today because I'd just lose it trying to get it back together again, but I can provide you with a helpful link in the description. The last piece of this beautiful functionality comes on the gas tube release lever, which sweeps out of its home so smoothly it's satisfying as hell. The click on this is everything. Moving on to the magazines, something which TMAKM owners could only dream of owning. Unfortunately, the demand for these is huge, as Mowry do not continuously produce them, only periodically, so you have to be snappy when you see them come back in stock. Myself, I have loads of them. In fact, I accidentally put small scratches on a couple, so I just threw them away. These are identical to their M4, in a sense where they are constructed of a solid cast metal, so there's no separate internal gas tank. The body itself is the gas tank. 
I like how lightweight these are, sitting at a mere 512 grams unloaded and empty of gas. Now you might be thinking, that's not light. But remember, I'm used to GHK AK mags, and those are almost 700 grams apiece. Believe me, this is a good thing. Now these have been a bit of a ball lake if I'm honest. This is mainly due to their awkward feed lips. Now they do accept the pistol style speed loading adapters, but because these feature an elaborate array of levers for the valve block device, this requires a bit of concentration and correct positioning for positive loading. The best loader I've used with these mags is the WE T-Rex loader with the pistol adapter. The solid plastic breaks the seal from that follower tab and feeds BBs really well. The capacity is 35 BBs and I saw no particular break-in period. Sometimes TM mags need a few days left at half capacity in order to get it used to carrying BBs, but these weren't so bad. Charging gas is also annoying, because you're having to charge at a funny angle, direct with the orientation of the valve. I think Ollie Talks Airsoft did it best with his video involving gas charges, so take a look at that one and give his channel some love. At first I was having issues finding that optimal gas charge, and it appeared that one magazine in particular was underfilling. It just would not take on enough gas to clear a magazine. It seemed the inlet valve was to blame, because when I used one for my M4 mags, this fixed the problem. Now let's see how far the AKM will go in a series of propane charges on a completely original magazine. Firing once per second, and with 5 seconds charged, it was only able to get off 28 shots. That's a pitiful result. So that's all 6 grams of propane can give you. Or me, your results may vary. Now 10 seconds and we get 65 shots, so that's not too bad at all. With 10 seconds you should have no problem clearing a load of BBs. Now 15 seconds on, but the excessive spray from the inlet valve indicated a full charge at roughly 13 seconds, and the AKM cycled its final shot at 70. Comparatively this is fairly similar to their M4, perhaps the AK's larger gas tank can hold a fraction more gas. I know a lot of you might be wondering what the figures would come up with the green gas mod. For those of you that are unaware of this, it's essentially removing the silver siphon tube from inside the magazine. It being there serves to regulate the amount of gas charged, and prevents overfilling. Removing it allows more volume of liquid gas to be charged, so you can increase the gas capacity as well as your total round count from the magazine. The figures didn't change much between 5 and 10 second fills. 5 seconds pumped out an even 30 shots, and 10 seconds fired 62 shots, 3 less than before. The difference came beyond 10 seconds, 15 seconds produced 91 shots, pushing in more gas for a total of 20 seconds, and we crossed the 100 shot barrier at 123. And finally, pushing it to 25 seconds and it resulted in 171 cycles before the gas tank flamed out. 171. Now you might be thinking, amazing, I don't have to refill my gas for ages. Well, don't be so sure. Because if you charge that much gas and go to fire your rifle at someone, you'll probably end up spraying unconverted liquid gas through your nozzle, down the barrel, and eject some of it out of the side of the AKM. You have just overfilled your magazine, and the BB has probably hit the ground not too far in front of you. The thing is, gas magazines require breathing space to properly convert that liquid into a gas. Take that room away by filling as much gas as possible, and you will lose that space, therefore it will destroy the performance. So typically, with green gas modded mags, you only need a good 12, maybe 13 seconds for a fast, smooth gas blowback operation that's guaranteed to clear the load of VBs. This is the same with the M4 mag, so it's still completely optional to perform this mod, but be aware, you'll have to be extra careful when managing your gas charges, you have been warned. If you fancied experimenting, you could lose a few centimetres off those inner tubes to give yourself that maximum charge safety net. Chrono results with Garda Bio 2s kicked off with the highest reading of 352.7 and ended at 313.7. 
dropping 39 FPS over 35 shots, using propane on a warm 21 degrees Celsius day, averaging 332.4. Now testing the same gas but with Jeff Bio 3s, and we see the FPS fall on the account of the heavier rounds, but of course the energy in joules is increased. The highest FPS at 301.5 and the 29th shot was the lowest with 217.1. Total average was 272.9. The highest joule output came to 1.26, and the 29th shot provided the lowest joule score with 0.65. Average joules came to 1.03, and just so you're aware, these tests were conducted with the hop-up almost maxed out for range with heavier ammo. When it comes to shooting this AKM, it is a monster. It delivers a good punch in the shoulder and it correctly separates itself from its M4 brother. Out of the box, those feel like competition AR-15s because they shoot so clean and fast. The AK feels exactly what a gas blowback equivalent should feel like. With every cycle, the working parts create a good amount of muzzle flip for a toy gun, and you can see this happen when you torch off rounds. Looking at the slow-mo playback, you'll see that barrel whip when it shoots, and it's just more of that realistic AK magic. The large bolt carrier group smashes back into the buffer, creating a heavy mechanical recoil. This is what GBBRs are all about, and you'll love every shot until the hammer comes back forward one last time. The Tokyo Marui AKM is superb. However, it's not totally perfect, reason being the recoil spring is on the softer side, which results in a slow return speed. This is something which has been reported many times over within the community, and luckily Bowmaster have a 130% spring set that boosts the speed. But I'm still using a stock gun, so I'm not too bothered for the moment. Setting the rifle to the middle position, and it just takes off. One perfect character-defining feature has to be its realistic rate of fire. In ideal temperatures, the rate of fire remains constant, although it is common for the final 10 shots to chant at a slower tempo. Cooldown still happens, but this AKM can still chug through on auto, even in the colder conditions as you'll see later. I do tend to think their M4 is perhaps a fraction better at maintaining a consistent speed on the fun mode. The flip side is that on this GBBR, it doesn't care too much about maintaining that rhythm, it'll get there in its own time, and I love that about it. The mark of a good GBBR is whether it can do mag dumps. So, let's see if the TMAKM can do it. And how many? That's 
one. Yeah, that's about it from that one. It's pretty much what I get all the time. One and a bit. Although, on one occasion, I did manage to ply through two loads of BBs to one charge of gas. I don't know how I managed to do that. Don't know what kind of magical gas fill I did on a completely stopped mag, but... drop completely empty oh man that's the second magazine it's just blown through Let's see <laughs> it was good enough to get one shot off at least and try and load the next one but yeah um, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead two full magazine dumps from uh, one charge of propane it would be criminal to move past this point without seeing what the AKM can do with the green gas modified magazine and 20 seconds charged. Second magazine. Come on. Make it through the third. We are empty. Third magazine. Cool. Make it through the fourth. Probably not. <laughs> so there you have it. Burned through three magazines and about five shots through the fourth. Moving on to cold weather performance, and unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to use the AKM in snowy conditions as I have done before on the GHK AK and Marui M4. The best I could do was throw the magazine into the freezer for an hour. Stock magazine, and it's currently minus 9 degrees Celsius. Yep. Let's see how she runs in the AK. It's 35. But magazine's frozen, so the follower's probably not reaching up to deactivate it. So there you go. Minus 9 degrees Celsius, completely frozen magazine. But still managed to get through 35 rounds and then a little bit more. 9 degrees Celsius, but green gas mod. Let's see how it does in the AK. Thirty-five. It's still shooting. Now completely gone. 
The AKM was able to shoot out all 35 rounds from the magazines, but obviously the bolt stop mechanism failed, as it was frozen solid. To be honest, this is an unrealistic scenario, but again, it's a test for the sake of it. Hell, the BBs are only just piercing the paper on my target, one meter away. Here we are shooting paper at 20 meters away, and I'm using Jeff's Super Precision Bio 2 8s. Coming around to using iron sights again, and it seems my eyes cannot focus on these things anymore. But anyway, I did alright, to be fair. I got the majority of the shots on the page. Not printing spectacular results by the time I get up close to have a look, but they all landed within the central portion of the page, with only a few flyers. Moving on to threes, and oddly, we see a wider pattern emerging. They print themselves high and low. Previously, the two eights were spreading themselves laterally. The added 0.2 grains of weight didn't seem to add any major compression of groupings. Although, I would say, it did gather a higher population of scores within a smaller space than with two eights. Not so much compressed, but more condensed. Here's another I put together, all hitting within the lower half of the target. As before, the majority hit within the space of my fist, so it's not too bad. It's practically on par with what I've seen from the M4, which makes a lot of sense as it's using the same barrel and rubber. All in all, it's about what I expected. It's certainly better at delivering accuracy than I can be, especially if the meat popsicle behind the stock can actually see what they're doing. It's a good start. It punched holes almost inside of previous ones, so it had some repeatability in there, you could make it work. Although, the real deficiency in its performance comes to light when you push the AKM at distance shooting. Stretching the AKM's legs at range, and this is one of the weakest points in terms of performance. The original hop-up components do not like to lift heavier rounds. I'm using Jeff Bio 3s, and it's really struggling to put a good amount of backspin to maximise on distance. The wheel is dialed all the way to the end, and even at 40 metres you can see the BBs reach this point and begin their descent. I was able to focus a good few shots within the torso area, but dropping rounds on the target at considerably medium distance is not what we want to do. GBBRs need to be able to take heavier rounds and a stock Maruri AKM isn't going to be doing that for you. My M4 is able to lift threes no problem, and those aren't even that heavy. While it's not giving an adequate amount of lift, it's nice those BBs are falling within a half a metre window. I tried two eights at 50 metres, and the BBs behave as the threes did at 40. They were just about touching that range, although again without the appropriate backspin, so it's still dropping them with full hop-up adjustment. This AKM yearns for an enhanced hard rubber to unlock its fullest potential, rather than waste my time buying lightweight ammunition to gain distance. Like its recommended gas, this is just another indicator of its target audience. Weaker gas, lighter BBs, it works in Japan but I'm afraid it's not doing us any favours here. One thing I wanted to add to these reviews, where possible that is, is to present the effects of the cold at range. That's something we don't often see on reviews, so first we'll see what it's like functioning on automatic, and then see what the BBs are doing, and how the AKM launches them outside of its comfort zone. Just out here in the uh freezing weather, well it's not really freezing, it's only about 5 degrees celsius out here today. Got my temperature gauge and I've left this magazine outside for a little while to get to get nice and chilled and we are currently at, I don't know if that comes up, 3 degrees, 3 degrees celsius. Yeah. Four degrees towards the bottom. So, uh, while we're here, let's see if we can uh, dump a whole magazine. Now, it's, it's going to be able to do it on, on semi-automatic, no problem. 
uh, everyone's seen that before, but let's let's run it through on fully automatic just to see. And my drop on empty, and it works really well. Uh, really slow rotor fire, really chugging, but every single one of those VVs, I mean, granted they're 0.2s, 0.2 bios, they just went straight out there to around 50, 50 meters plus. Uh, it's not gonna be able to do that with the heavyweight ammunition, um, unless I, you know, put a, uh, a harder bucking in. But apart from that, it runs like a champ. <laughs> so, and that's a completely unmodified magazine as you get it out of the box. Three or four degrees Celsius, no problem there. Okay, so uh, here we are again. Um, same magazine, unmodified, no green gas mods, just as you get it out of the box. I've refilled it with some VVs again, a little top of the gas and just left it in the cold, and it is currently... three degrees Celsius. So it's not a warm mag at all, um, it's pretty chilly, um, currently at the beginning of December, so yeah, pretty, pretty chilly enough to wear the hat, gloves, and my uh, Buffalo Special 6 shirt underneath this. Now, I'm just gonna take some shots at range just to show you what the VBs are doing um, with the impact of the cold weather on them. So I'll spin the camera around now and we will take a look at the target. So zoom in. Let's see if we can reach it. Let's go. 50 meters away. Round in the chamber. Okay, ran all the way through. Empty the magazine. I think the BBs were making all the way there, so not bad. Quite a bit of wind out there, so it's not amazing for the old accuracy at range, but never mind. I think the BBs are making it all the way there nonetheless. Point twos, so can't expect much accuracy out of those guys, can we? The Tokyo Marui AKM. Let's put the past 34 minutes into perspective, shall we? First of all, TM know how to present their toys, don't they? Box design, the canvas gun wrap, so cool. The way the rifle has been crafted, finished and built, it's truly phenomenal. Once again, they're taking the airsoft market to school with their exceptional quality. It's a robust, solid lump of AK goodness. From an accuracy point of view, they've replicated the period of AKM correctly, and it's dripping in authentic markings. And to give them their due, the plastic furniture's wood grain doesn't look all that bad and the Bakelite grip too, it's outstandingly replicated. The operating system is solid. In the past year and a half, it's been blazing away without as much as a hiccup or excessive wear on the account of propane usage. It's a tank, as AK should be. AKM's features and functionality when it comes to the dry fire mode, hop-up adjustment, magazine interface, chamber seal, and a realistic hammer drop are superb. They did their homework with this one, and it shows. The trigger action out of the box blows their M4 trigger away. It's light, but exceptional. The recoil you get from a stock rifle is great fun. You saw this thing bounce around when it's going off. This is what a gas AK should be like. Fun. Just good old fun. Speaking of fun, it's just as happy running on automatic as it is on single fire and cycles perfectly on regular and my choice of biodegradables without incident. Cold weather performance like the M4 is excellent. In the temps I was using it in, it seemed to hover at a baseline temperature and kept on chugging anyway, despite not giving the correct amount of management I really should have given the conditions, it still ran. And finally, it's only been out for about a year and a half at this stage, 
and third-party upgrades and accessories are slowly appearing on the scene. It's taken its time, but at least it's happening. Real wood kits, receiver sets, handguards, stocks, internals, and Valanti's new Volt Travel Bolt is certainly looking promising. Give it another year or so, and there'll be a hell of a lot more. And now we come to the bad news of the Marui AKM. First of all, let's talk about its realism, or lack thereof. Among the most unrealistic features, the plastic furniture and trunnionless cast receiver are the most immediately noticeable. GBL, or RPA, are soon to be releasing a stamped steel receiver set, so that would be interesting. This should have come under the first point, but I think it's special enough to mention it on its own. The half travel bolt carrier. I really don't mind it, but it's one more thing that's going to be judged upon. The receiver itself has an uninspiring paint job to it too, not a fan of that at all. The stock has a weird extension that prohibits the use of real AK wood stocks, not without heavy modifications anyway, it's such an odd contraption. I have a real hard time that it cannot lift threes, and they're not even that heavy. So now I'm going to have to tear the gun apart and upgrade it to unlock the heavyweight BB's perk. The magazines can be fairly awkward when charging gas, as some gas nozzles can be just too short for a solid gas connection. What's more, those magazines are in extreme demand, as they are not constantly rolling off an assembly line, so you've got to be fast when they come back in stock. The magazines themselves are proprietary to the Murui AKM, and other brand AK mags are not compatible. Aftermarket magazines are not available also, with the exception of the Strike Industries version. You'll probably have to wait a few years for a company to make some that are remotely as good as the originals. How long did it take the M4? What, four, five years? For a good one? So there it is, my AKM review. In the time I've been getting to know this AKM, I have found it to be one charming GBBR, one that has delivered a solid performance from the box. The only thing which has let me down is its inability to lift 2.8 BBs or higher, and that's not asking a lot, is it? Being able to use a low-end intermediate weight projectile? It's a GBBR, it needs to run on heavier BBs for that higher hit probability. It's in no way a difficult endeavour to fix this, so really it's super easy to overcome this mild annoyance. Otherwise, I'm totally happy with this AK. It's great fun, and has vast potential for the future. Their M4 is a phenomenon, a masterpiece in GBBRs. So much so, that I was, and still am content, in its stock performance. This AK though? Well, as I said, it's got the potential. I'm afraid it's a gun which actually needs only a very minute enhancement for me to feel 100% confident in taking it onto the field, that's all. I suppose one more thing would make it infinitely more user-friendly, and that would be a way to mount an optic out of the box. But why complain about that? It's a bone stock 1975 pattern AKM. The Soviets weren't known for mass fielding optic equipped AKs, and from what I've seen from February 2022, they still aren't. Taking the perspective of those that want a realistic AK, this isn't it. Their first priority is making a high performing airsoft gun for the field. How it delivers every bolt reciprocation from 1 to 35, sensational, you'll love that. How it is, with what it's made from, you won't love that. That's not a priority to TM. If that really bothers you, you'll be able to change that, but it'll cost you. So what you might ask me, is the Marui AKM GBBR worth it? To buy it and then upgrade the externals to get the finest, or the word you'll probably use, best gas blowback AK? If you have the money for it, yeah. The platform's gas system, the recoil, fire control mechanism, all the expected third party support, and above all else, that good old Japanese quality control. Do it for those reasons, and you'll have an absolute tank of a gas blowback AK. As there are only a few brands making gas AKs, there are compromises in all of them. With this one, you have the unrealistic externals, and half travel bolt. 
but swap out some of those parts you don't like, and man, do you have a beast? So after that, the only things you'll have to realistically worry about are number one, finding the magazines, and then number two, upgrading the rubber or hop-up arm to lift heavier rounds, if you need to, that is. Is it worth it anyway, as it is? Well, you tell me. You just saw it shoot through 35 rounds on a frozen magazine and mag dump at 5 degrees Celsius just for the hell of it. Could you really dismiss a gas rifle that doesn't seem to care what you put it through? I couldn't. Forget about the externals, at its core this AKM is a juggernaut. If I can get it lifting heavier rounds, that will do nicely. It's a good GBBR, and without much effort, it will be great. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it all the way to this point, you are awesome. Thank you very much for staying the course, and watching the last year and a half compress into the last 40 minutes. What do you think of the AKM? Do you want one? And how much do you dislike the externals? Let me know in the comments. And please, a show of hands if you want to see this go up against the GHK. If you enjoyed the video, yeah, you know what to do. Like, share, and if you're still not a subscriber, go ahead and join me. I've collected the best subscriber base on the planet. Each and every one of them is a legend, and you can be too. Once again, if you'd like to support the channel further, you can buy me a coffee if you like. Also, if you want to see regular updates, things I'm getting up to behind the scenes, check out my Facebook and Instagram accounts. Until next time, take care my friends, catch you in a bit.